Hey guys, so today I wanted to make a video on one of my favorite cars out there, the Dodge Charger Daytona. If you follow the channel, you'll know that I have a 2006 Daytona in tour red, and I really love that car. This video will focus on the history of the Daytona, going through all the various iterations that were created, from the return of the Charger in 2006 up until the present day in 2020. This will be the first part which looks at the more modern stuff, and I will also release another episode that looks at the 1969 to 1993 older Daytonas, so stay tuned for that coming soon. If you do follow my channel closely, you'll know that I had previously done a longer video on this topic, combining the two segments, but I felt like it wasn't done right as it was way too long, and I had missed the 1984 to 1993 Daytonas. So that video has since been deleted, and these two will take its place. For each of these cars, we'll look at the unique features that make it a Daytona, how many were produced, the colors available, and all of the exterior and interior specs. Whether you have a Daytona yourself, used to have one, or just love Dodge Chargers in general, hopefully you enjoy this video and appreciate these beautiful and powerful cars. So let's begin. Another interesting point is the origins of the name. The Daytona name is taken from Daytona Beach, Florida, which has hosted auto racing events for years, and still hosts one of NASCAR's premier events to this day, the Daytona 500. First up is the 2006-2009 Dodge Charger Daytona RT model. These cars had a starting price of around $35,000 at the time. To celebrate the Chargers' return to NASCAR in the Nextel Cup at Daytona International Speedway, Dodge wasted no time by releasing the Daytona RT right away in 2006. One of the main selling features of these Daytonas were the high-impact exterior colors that were not available on the other models, and each of them was made in limited production quantities. Many of these colors were throwbacks to Dodge Heritage paint from the past. As you can see by the chart on screen, 2006 had Go Mango, Top Banana, and Torred. 2007 got Sublime and Plum Crazy, 2008 got Hemi Orange, and 2009 was Stone White. All in all, there were just 14,950 cars made for the US, and another 1,148 for Canada, with Stone White being the rarest color option by far. The Stone White version is actually an interesting story. It wasn't supposed to happen, but executives decided that due to low sales, right at the end of the production run, they would make another small batch of Daytonas, including 12 of them in Canada that were not numbered. You also might notice that the Go Mango color doesn't quite resemble the color of a mango, like the brighter versions of the 1960s. Dodge originally had wanted to call this color Come and Get Me Copper, but there were some legal issues with using that name, and they settled for Go Mango in the end. To distinguish the Daytona from the regular Charger RT model, it got a sportier interior, different visual aspects, and better performance. You can instantly separate the Daytona from the rest, as this model has a black honeycomb grille and front chin spoiler in the front, red Heritage RT badging instead of the normal chrome ones, and a black rear deck lid spoiler. Several decals are added as well, like a black Hemi hood one, a rear quarter panel black Daytona stripe, and the trunk gets blacked out as well. Daytona models also come with bright dual exhaust tips and a Hemi orange engine cover under the hood instead of the regular gray one that the other 5.7s got. And polished 18-inch wheels with low-gloss jet black pockets completed the look. The Daytona did undergo some changes in the following years. In 2006, there were the 18-inch wheels that we've been over, but 2007 to 2009 models got 20-inch chrome-clad wheels instead. In 2008, Dodge took off the black rear quarter panel stripes, and they put a Daytona strobe stripe that runs right along the side of the car on the doors. As I mentioned, the interior got a little bit of a different treatment as well. There are leather performance front seats with Daytona logos that were stitched into the headrests and Alcantara suede inserts. Body color stitching can also be found on all the seats, on the leather wrap steering wheel, and on the leather wrap shift knob. The bezel around the center console and the radio is also finished to match the body color. On the passenger side, you can find your limited edition Daytona badge, which shows the production number of your car for that specific color. The dash cluster will also display the word Daytona upon startup. Moving on to the performance, the RT Daytona had a 5-speed automatic transmission with auto stick, and the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi, so that's the same as the RT. This setup made 350 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels. Chrysler used a more free-flowing intake and a straight-through muffler, which added 10 more horsepower than a regular RT, and a bit more of a throaty sound as well. The Daytona also removed the stock RT speed limiter. In 2009, with the new variable camshaft timing Hemi, the Daytona numbers got bumped up to 368 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque. The stock Daytona was capable of a 0-60 in 5.6 seconds and the quarter mile in 14.2 seconds. 
And these Daytonas also got a performance suspension with Nevamat self-leveling rear shock absorbers and a 9-land steering gear that was taken from the SRT models for better handling and more road feel. After 2009, there was a 4-year hiatus, but the Daytona RT would return for the 2013 model year, first being shown off at the 2012 Los Angeles International Auto Show. This Daytona was based on the RT model again, but you could also get it with the road and track trim. An RT Daytona had an MSRP of $33,985, and the RT Road and Track Daytona started at $37,490. So that put the Daytona price tag around $3,000 more than the regular RT counterparts. There were supposed to be 3,000 Daytonas produced in total, but the final production was actually 2,311, as you can see by the chart. Most were in Daytona blue, and that's of course the color that you most commonly see, but there was also three other color options, pitch black, bright white, and billet silver. Like most of these Daytona models, the changes are mostly visual into the exterior of the car. The front crosshair grille gets blacked out and has a red Heritage RT badge in the lower corner. There's also satin black hood graphics, roof wrap, and Daytona black lettering along the rear quarter panels. The spoiler is blacked out too. The wheels were also exclusive to the Daytona, 20-inch 5-spoke polished aluminum with gloss black painted pockets. Inside there are more upgrades. The Daytona RT gets cloth seating, while the road and track versions get black Napa leather with suede heated and ventilated seats. No matter which model you get, there will be the embroidered Daytona writing in the back of the front seats, and the seats will have Daytona blue stitching and piping along the sides of them. Brushed aluminum trim can be found on the center stack, console, and instrument cluster areas. Other upgraded features include flashy Mopar pedals, and a 552-watt 10-speaker Beats audio system. Just like the previous version, you can find the Daytona plaque on the passenger side with your unique serial number. Under the hood, there's a special Daytona blue engine cover, but there's no power added to the 5.7 liter V8 that the RT has. So there's 370 horsepower, 395 pound-feet of torque, and a 5-speed automatic. There were some minor performance upgrades though, such as a performance 3.06 rear axle gear ratio, high-speed engine controller, paddle shifters on the steering wheel, a sport driving mode, and performance steering and suspension. At the end of the day, these RTs could do 0-60 to 60 in about 5.1 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.8 seconds. Moving on from that, we had to wait a few years to see another Daytona, but it did return for 2017 on the newest generation of the Chargers. There were a couple variations. First for 2017 and 2018, there were two specific Daytona models in the lineup. One RT with a 5.7 V8 Hemi, and the 392 version with the 6.4 V8 Hemi. For 2019 and 2020, the Daytona models have been removed and replaced by a Daytona package, costing $3,495. So you can still add it to your RT or 392 model, but just as a package now. There was no set amount to be produced like the last few versions, Dodge had just planned to make enough for the demand. So the production numbers ended up being 3,631 for the RT in 2017 and 2,710 for 2018, while the 392 had 2,508 for 2017 and it wasn't able to get the 2018 numbers. We also don't know how many packages were ordered for the last two years. Both the Daytona versions had the same menacing look inside and out. The exterior gets the SRT front and rear performance fascias, side sills, Daytona grille badging, and one-piece satin black spoiler. As with the previous Daytonas, there are some satin black decals added as well. The hood has a cutout hemi graphic above the scoop, the roof gets blacked out, and there's a black deck lid stripe with Daytona graphics on the rear quarter panels. Moving on inside, there are black heated and ventilated Alcantara suede performance seats, brazen gold accent stitching, Daytona embroidered in the seat backs, and 12-way power adjustable for both of the front seats. The stitching will continue on the armrests, the door panels, and center console, and there are carbonite aluminum interior bezels with gloss black accents. The Daytonas also get a performance steering wheel, bright pedals, premium floor mats, and a Daytona instrument panel badge. So again, these features come on either Daytona, the RT or the 392. When looking at the RT, it had a starting price of $39,890, and once it became a package, as we said, it was $34.95. The RT has the 5.7 liter V8, a Mopar cold air intake, and an electronically controlled active exhaust that sounds phenomenal right from the factory. And this has 2.75 inch pipes and 4 inch round tips. To improve the performance, there's a 2.62 axle ratio 
engine and transmission calibration, and a high-speed engine controller, making the car to have a top speed of 150 miles per hour instead of 135 on the regular RT. The Super Track Pack is also included with the performance suspension and brakes, and Goodyear Eagle F1 tires. This has very similar performance times to the previous Daytona RT models. As for looks, the RT does get 20 by 9 inch Mopar lightweight forged aluminum wheels that were finished in Hyper Black 2 with 245-45ZR20 tires. As for the Daytona 392, it started at just under $45,000 or just under $3,500 for the package version. This car has a 6.4 liter V8 with 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. It also has the Mopar cold air intake along with a 3.09 axle ratio, 230mm limited slip rear axle, and the active exhaust. This gave it some incredible performance with a 0-60 to time of 4.2 seconds and a quarter mile time of 12.5 seconds. Other features include Brembo 6 piston front and 4 piston rear brakes with vented rotors, a 180 mile per hour speedometer, and 392 fender decals. As for the wheels, they are wider than the RT version, 20 by 9.5 inch forged aluminum with a low gloss black finish and 275 40ZR20 tires. The final Daytona on this list is also the most recent, with Dodge surprising us with a 2020 SRT Hellcat widebody Daytona. This is a limited edition version that commemorates the 50th anniversary of the original Daytona models, and just 501 will be made. The base for this Daytona is the Hellcat widebody, which was new for the Charger for 2020. That widebody includes some features such as 3.5 inch wider fender flares, wider 20 by 11 inch rims with 305 35 20 tires, Bill Stein 3 mode adaptive damping suspension, and electronic power steering. Wide bodies will also get things like race cooldown, line lock, launch control, and launch assist. As for more details, first, this car is available in just four paint colors B5 blue, pitch black, triple nickel, and white knuckle. For 2020, the only way to get B5 blue is with this Daytona model, so it's not available on any other charger. You also get the Daytona rear quarter decal, deck lid, spoiler, and different color Hellcat badge. On the B5 Blue, Pitch Black, and Triple Nickel, the decal, spoiler, and badge will be white. But that's different on the White Knuckle version, where the Daytona decal and spoiler are blue, while the Hellcat badge gets a bright finish. This is different than all the previous Daytona decals, which were always finished in either flat or satin black. The rims are also unique to the Daytona, with 20 by 11 inch warp seed wheels with a satin carbon finish. And beneath the wheels are black Brembo calipers, with 6 pistons in the front and 4 pistons in the rear. Moving on inside, this Daytona got some upgrades as well. The seats are your typical Daytona heated and ventilated Alcantara suede, finished in black with blue accent stitching and Daytona embroidered in the back of the seat. They are also 12-way power adjustable. The blue accent stitching will continue throughout the center console armrest, the door panels, dashboard and shifter as well. The headliner is made from Dynamica suede, the instrument panel is finished in real carbon fiber, and there are light black chrome console bezels and interior accents. The flat bottom steering wheel also has some of those accents and it gets finished in suede, while the premium velour floor mats have a blue dual stitched accent border. This particular steering wheel and floor mat are only available in this Daytona model. The final interior detail will be an awesome looking Hellcat and Daytona badge on the passenger side dashboard that tells you which number yours is out of 501. As for the performance, for a few years now the base Challenger Hellcat got a refresh with 717 horsepower, but the Charger never got the same treatment and many were wondering when or if it would get the same horsepower bump, as the 2019 Charger Hellcat remained at 707 horsepower. So finally this Daytona received that extra bump of 10 horsepower to 717 while having the same amount of torque at 650 pound feet. That's all from the 6.2 liter supercharged V8 Hemi engine. Dodge says that that bump in horsepower comes from increasing the shift points to 6100 RPM in automatic mode. So that's where we finish off this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed going through the history of the Dodge Charger Daytona as much as I did. And remember, the other episode with the older models will be coming soon. Let me know if you guys have a Daytona in your garage down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.